notifications to start. Um, <clears throat> I am going to be making tomorrow's breakfast. Uh, my friend made this recipe for my husband and I before we had kids, back when we, when we lived in town, and my husband and I both loved it, and I've never made it. So I thought this would be a really fun thing uh, for us to make, especially because who doesn't like being able to prep something the night before and just wake up and not have to worry about it and just put it in the oven and it will be done for the family. So we're going to make this French toast, and we're going to let it set overnight. Hello, Tammy. Hello, everybody. Lacey. Um... So what, I mean, what, you couldn't get any better than that to prep a breakfast. And then I told my husband that I'm just going to lay in bed and he can put it in the oven and bake it for the kids because, um, I mean, there's seriously nothing better, you guys. So you guys would not believe, I should have just gone live yesterday so that you guys could see how, what my voice sounded like. I... I basically didn't have a voice and that's only ever happened one other time in my life where my voice was completely gone. I woke up in the morning and Rory couldn't hear me. He didn't know what I was saying. My son was like, mom, I don't like this. Why don't you have a voice? And so I went to the doctor and obviously there's not a whole lot they can do for you when you just have like a viral infection. Um, but at that point, it was taking so much work to talk that it almost felt like it was in my lungs. So I just wanted to make sure it wasn't. So I went to the doctor. She said my lungs were clear, my ears and my nose they obviously were plugged up, but there was no serious um, infection other than the virus. Um, the good thing that I told her, I'm like, it, she's like, you know, just lay down. Let's rest, you know, rest your voice. I was like, I have a two-year-old and a four-year-old. That's not going to happen. And I'm like saying this, like straining to tell her that I can't not have a voice. And she's like, okay, well, I'll prescribe you some viral um, steroid pills that will bring the inflammation down in your vocal cords. So it'll bring your voice back. You won't feel any better, but you'll be able to talk. And so that was a lifesaver. You guys, I was like, it's the silliest thing, but not being able to talk. Like it was stressful. My husband couldn't hear me. My kids couldn't hear me. I was constantly like straining so hard to get the words out. And it's not normal for me because I'm not used to losing my voice. No matter how hard I've screamed at a concert or how frequently I talk, I've never lost it. So it, it was definitely something different yesterday to not have a voice at all. Thank you guys. I am feeling a little bit better. Um, other than just what's left of my vocal cords being inflamed, she said. And, um, but other than that, it's just going to go away with time. <laughs> Thank you guys. So we are going to, oh no, Teresa, you lost your voice too. You guys, I wouldn't wish that on anybody. My husband even joked about it. We went to Panera after we went to the doctor and we walked up in the line and he's like, he's like, just whisper in my ear what you want. Cause it's obviously easier to whisper than it is to like talk. So I like whispered in his ear and the lady at the register was super confused and she he was like, she's so sick. She lost her voice. And my husband goes, I like it. She can't yell at us. I wish it would happen more often. So my brother, my husband got to poke a little bit of fun at me because I lost my voice. Harmony, I'm glad you guys got get to catch me live. I've been sitting here waiting for this to load so that I can share this video <clears throat> on some of the cooking groups that I'm a part of. But it is so slow to load, you guys. So just bear with me. If you want to share this video as well, please do so. Um, we are going to be prepping breakfast for tomorrow. This French toast bake, you guys, um, if you don't want to prep it the night before, you can make it the day of. They just recommend that you let it set for 35 to 45 minutes before you put it in the oven. So you are um, compromising a little bit of time if you don't make it ahead of time, just in case you have guests coming over earlier in the day and you don't want to be running around. At the crack of dawn, it's easier to just prep it at night. Crystal, right? So Crystal called me yesterday. Um, and I think I had kind of warned her that I didn't have a voice, but I don't think she knew what to expect when I answered the phone. She was like, um, am I even talking to Riley right now? <laughs> I had them test me for strep throat, but it was negative. Yeah, Teresa, mine was negative too. I knew it was going to be because I caught this from my son and, and I had him tested for strep and he didn't have it. So I knew I wasn't going to have it. I don't have tonsils or adenoids, so it's a lower chance of me catching it anyway. But I knew it was not going to be anything that could, they could really treat. But I am so glad. Thank you, Mallory, for spreading the love. I'm so glad she at least gave me that steroid for my voice, you guys. Because I was like, I have to go cook on my show. I've got a two-year-old and a four-year-old. Like, I can't not have a voice. Like, this is not going to work for me. So she was really sweet and understanding. She must be a mom, too. So she was like, I get it. 
perfect. I'll give you something to get your voice back. <laughs> I was like, thanks. All right, so I shared those on some cooking groups. Some, um, one of the groups that I highly recommend to you guys, since we have so many people watching right now, um, is a group, it's called the What's for Dinner, and it just has one um, question mark at the end of it, What's for Dinner. It is an awesome, super supportive cooking group. Um, I've noticed it's a lot of Midwesterners, like I am, um, a lot of relatable recipes and stories and stuff like that. So if you want a nice, friendly cooking group to be a part of, and when I say friendly, I am a part of a couple of cooking groups that are a little cutthroat. Um, I even hesitate to post my food on there because I've gotten a little bit of like, like flack, like they would not approve of me using my pre-chopped up minced garlic that I use. Oh, they would like smite me right there on the spot if they found out I used that stuff. So this group, What's for Dinner, is way friendlier, way nicer. Um, you won't get, you, they won't give you a hard time for stuff like that. So, <laughs> hello, hello everybody. I'm just going to tie this hair back a little bit better because it is driving me nuts today. <clears throat> so we are going to make this French toast bake. And it is going to be so yummy. I'm so excited, you guys. So let's get started. What I love about this, I'm not preheating my oven. Nothing, I'm not actually cooking anything today. We are just prepping this. So what we're going to do first, we're going to have half a cup of salted melted butter. So I'm going to take my stick of butter and I'm going to put it in a microwave safe dish. And I'm going to microwave it in 20 second increments until it is melted. You guys know how I recommend that you do short little bursts of heat on butter instead of um, too much too soon. It will just boil that butter and it'll cause it to separate and it's just not, it, it don't have the same effect if you just slowly, slowly heat it up. Hi dad. You'll share your huevos in the morning. You share the boys in the French toast. <laughs> Deal, you can have them. <coughs> I love my boys so much, but they just don't understand. My mommy doesn't feel good. She doesn't feel good. So they, you know, looking at me like, why is mom so grumpy? <laughs> it's like, because they don't feel good. And my kids, uh, my, my four-year-old has been so stubborn recently. So we put him to bed at nine. And all the way up until 1130 last night. And I'm sure you guys that are parents get it. Every 20 minutes or so, you'd hear him. And he thinks you can't hear him. You hear him and he'd leave his room and he'd come up the stairs, you guys, and you'd hear him creep into the living room and sometimes he would go hide behind the couch or whatever and he would hide back there. And it's like, just get your butt in bed. Mom, I had to ask you a question. Mom, I miss you. Mom, can you come down and lay with me? Mom this, mom that, I need a snack, I need a drink. Oh my God, it was driving me insane. When you tried to make it, yours was so soggy. Crystal, so this recipe, I read through, um, She, uh, this person that I got this recipe from write, writes a blog, and the one thing that she highly, highly, highly recommends, and cannot stress it enough with enough asterisks and stuff like that, that while you're pouring your egg mixture, over your your french toast that you don't just dump it on there that you're supposed to like brush it and take the patience to just lightly egg the 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 french toast dip she doesn't even recommend dipping your bread and then laying it in there she recommends that you take the time to individually soak each loaf otherwise she said if you just dump it on the mixture it will all just go right under the bread the bread won't have a chance to soak it up and it will lay in between the layers and cause it to be soggy so if you did that, that's why. I read through this. I didn't want to mess this up because it sounds so yummy, okay? So we have our melted butter, and we are going to add our cup of brown sugar. It was so cute. I asked my husband to get the ingredients out for me while I was blow-drying my hair and getting the boys into the bath, and he started measuring out all my ingredients. I'm like, babe, no, you don't have to do that. I do that on my show. <laughs> He's like, oh, sorry. I got a little overexcited. So my brown sugar is already measured out. My sweet husband did that for me. <clears throat> so we are going to mix in, so we have a cup of butter, you guys, and a cup of brown sugar. It cannot get any better than that. Clark, uh, Linda, Linda, I am um, feeling a little bit better. Yesterday, I did not have a voice, so I went to the doctor, and they prescribed some steroids so that I could at least get my voice back. So that at least is um, on the plus side. I have a voice again, um, but I will just be dealing with this viral infection. You guys know how it is for a week or two until all the junk gets out of my system. She just recommends, you know, the normal saline spray when you blow your nose and the humidifier in your room. So like, I've got my room all barricaded off because we've got a humidifier in there. 
And so I just don't want the boys to open the door and let all the humidity out that I've been working to keep in there. It's expensive to keep distilled water in a, in a humidifier. Okay, so it says to use a spatula and evenly press the mixture into a 9 by 13 baking pan. So we will get this all in here. So this is just butter and brown sugar, you guys. That's just going to be right on the bottom of our French toast. That could not get any better than that, you guys. Thank you, Linda. Yes, I am glad that I am not dying. I seriously woke up yesterday and I even texted my poor mom. I'm like, I am dying, dying. I literally, I feel like I'm dead. And she is like, oh no. And I hadn't told her about my voice and she called me and she's like, you are dying. <laughs> yeah, I have not been this sick since the first summer I moved to North Dakota. I lost my voice and I had gotten really, really sick. But I'm not one that loses their voice very often, so it was definitely strange for the people the closest to me to not hear my voice. All right, so I want this to be as even as possible. I love brown sugar and butter, you guys. It seriously does not get any better than this. It told me to press it. I feel like I was a little skimp on my cup of brown sugar. Uh, my husband... It was, didn't think I had any brown sugar left, so he was like trying to scrounge up all of my brown sugar. So <clears throat> I'm just going to throw in a little extra brown sugar to soak up a lot of that butter that was sitting there. You could see a lot of the butter there, and it didn't have any brown sugar in it like over here in the corners. So we'll just kind of mix that in. That's a little better because it said press it in, and mine wasn't really that kind of consistency to be able to kind of like a wet sand is what you want so that you can press it into the bottom of your dish. Really get it nice and even. All right. So this really, if there's nothing super fancy to this, you guys, this is super easy, but it, if you just take the time, it turns out awesome. <coughs> Crystal, this is brown sugar and butter. Mallory, really sick in the summer. That's like blasphemy. You're not supposed to get sick in the summer. Winter time is what that's for. All right, you guys, so I have our brown sugar and our butter pushed in evenly to the pan. Now we can set this aside, and we're going to take a bowl and a whisk, and we're going to add our eggs. So we need four large eggs. One. A two. I haven't gotten a, a double egg in a while, so I feel like I'm due for a double yolk. Oh, dropped a big old shell in there. You guys know I always do my eggs separate, so good thing I didn't have any other ingredients in here. All right, four yummy eggs. Rinse my hands off from the egg yolk. Yes, Crystal, this is brown sugar and butter. So good. All right, so we've got our four eggs in here. We need our milk. It says that you can use low fat or whole milk. And if I'm gonna have a dessert like this, I'm gonna go all the way. So we are gonna do a cup and a half of our whole milk. Um, you guys know that I do give you a little pointer, something that was pointed out to me about four years ago from the same person that taught me how to make this. Oh, you guys, there's a shell in there. Um, is there is a difference between a liquid measuring cup and a solid measuring cup. And I don't want you guys to get them mixed up because it will make or break when you are baking something. If you mess those up, it will not turn out. Um, and I will show you in a second. There is a shell in here. Just more protein, right? That's what somebody said on our show once upon a time. All right. I think I got it all out. All right. So there is a difference between a liquid measuring cup and a solid measuring cup. Hi, Jamie. Jamie's my neighbor. Hi, Jamie. Um, so this is your liquid measuring cup, and this is your solid. Don't ever mix them up when it comes to baking. If you're, you're just grilling something, cooking something, just scooping something up, it's not a big deal. But when it comes to measuring out liquids and solids, you don't want to mess that up, you guys. It is a huge difference when it comes to baking. Things will not come out right if you are putting your milk into a solid measuring cup and pouring it out. It really will not be the same. So don't ever mess that up. If I, if I, if you, if you don't not learn anything else from me, just learn that one thing. Oh my God, Mallory, that would be so miserable to be sick and in labor. You felt like you were getting sick today, so you amped, amped up the elderberry and took 4,000 units of vitamin D. Yeah, and I had been taking, the second my son got sick, 
I started taking um, Zycam. And I was doing that like religiously and it didn't matter. This cold was coming through no matter what. <clears throat> That's what happens. Kids start going to school. They bring home all the crud. All right, you guys. So we've got our eggs. We've got our milk. All right. And another pointer on this recipe that it recommends is that you not only use vanilla, but you use a little bit of almond as well. So as long as you guys don't have an allergy, it is something um, she puts, this lady puts in all asterisks and italics and bold and everything that if you have almond extract to use it, it will really make a difference, she says. So we are going to do it, you guys. Pure almond extract. So a tablespoon of vanilla, a teaspoon of almond, and salt. You guys know how I normally feel about salt, but salt when it comes to baking is so good because of the sweet and salty mixture. We just need an eighth, an eighth of a teaspoon in there. Perfect. Now we've got, now I've got an eggshell in my whisk. Just icing on the cake, you guys. I drink emergency too. My husband's been downing that like crazy. I feel like I just logged on to learn that about the liquid measuring cup. I may have to have you message me and explain the difference. I can. I definitely can. It was taught to me. I used to suck at baking and nothing ever came out right. Um, the ingredients were always off. I never understood, especially when it came to making dough and um, like cakes and stuff like that. And it wasn't until my friend Ashley came over and she was baking something at my house and she said, like, hand me the milk and hand me a measuring cup and I handed her the milk and then I handed her this and she's like, no. And handed it back to me and I was just like, what do you mean, no? And she's like, that's not what you measure milk with. So <clears throat> it's something about um, the density of the different things and that they have a different volume. A liquid and a solid have a different volume that equals a cup if that makes any sense. If you don't use curry, you use almond. All right, you guys, so we get this nice and mixed up. It does say just to mix it by hand. Don't get crazy with um, an egg beater. Don't get crazy with a kitchen mixer. You just wanna beat up your mixture a little bit. <clears throat> and it said it should come out to two and three fourths cups total. I'm not gonna measure that, <clears throat> but it looks like a lot, so. So we've got that now, set it aside. Now, we're gonna bring this back. Now, here's another super important tip, you guys. Go to your grocery store and buy this type of bread, Texas toast. Not to be mistaken for the Texas toast you find in the freezer section that has garlic and butter and cheese on it. Texas toast is double the width of regular slices of toast. It will seriously make or break this dish. Um, if that might be another thing, Crystal, that may have gotten goofed up. You weren't using the right type of bread. Teresa, you guys, I'm telling you, like, I wanted to feel really stupid, but lately I feel like I'm not, I wasn't stupid because I feel like no one knows that. Nobody teaches you that. So how are you supposed to know? <coughs> another way that it, like, just really drives it home. You guys know that measuring cup that I love so much that I can't find right now? Oh, here it is. This just proves it, you guys, because here, liquid fill, okay? Here, fill the solids to the top. It's different. This is one measuring cup, and it has two different spots for what equals solids to liquids. I am telling you, it's it's hard fact, you guys. All right, so this bread will make or break this whole thing, you guys. So in a single layer, we are gonna put this Texas toast in our dish. It says about six slices, and it says you can cut up the bread to fill in the gaps if you need to. So I'm gonna put them bottom to bottom, like so. And I'm really just gonna squeeze this last piece in here, you guys. Squeeze it in there, perfect. Here we go. I love it, Bill. I'm so glad you guys bought one. That measuring cup is seriously the bee's knees. It's like the best thing. My aunt Linda taught it to me, had that measuring cup when I was a kid and it was awesome. Yeah, I'm telling you, it's why I hated baking too because nothing worked and I didn't know what was wrong. 
<laughs> and that's what was wrong is I wasn't baking is such an exact science and that's why I've been trying to do like the actual weight measurements because that's even more exact but that's why is because it's you weren't being exact in your measurements okay so what we're gonna do is we are going to slowly brush a cup of the egg mixture all right you guys know I'm not good with time and I'm not good with measurements so I'm going to perfectly measure out a cup of this egg mixture and then we are going to take the time as painstaking as it is she said to really focus on those crust pieces first to really get those ends nice and saturated first she said this seriously will make or break whether it is just a soggy goopy mess or whether it's nice like crunchy baked french toast crunchy but like just not soggy like nice sturdy toast so i'm just using a little um silicone butter brush and just brushing my edges with this egg mixture to really get those edges first and then we will focus on the center of our bread This is why I'm gonna make this ahead of time because then I can really give it the attention that it needs and I don't have kids running around me telling me how hungry they are and how they want it right now or they want cereal because they don't wanna wait. So it's nice. They don't even know that mommy's making breakfast right now. They're in the bathtub because they cleaned up all their toys finally. <laughs> I had to bribe them to clean up their toys or they wouldn't get a bath. And they actually did it. That's how bad my kids love baths. <clears throat> Does everyone skip the first slice of bread? I skip it at first, you guys, but then we always end up having to use it for a sandwich. Learning something new every day, and that's probably why my bread was soggy. It was the regular blade bread was at the farm, so I had no choice. Um, Teresa, the cash wise is where I got this, but they also have it at Marketplace if you have a Marketplace nearby, too. I feed the heel of my dog, the heel of the bread to my dog. I learned about the difference in home egg, however you spelled it, that Texas toast. Um, I love Texas toast too, and I didn't have home egg, I, or I did, just, just didn't pick it as a class in high school, so I didn't learn it in high school. My brother had it, so he probably knew the difference, but I did not. All right, so I don't wanna get too crazy, but I am just gonna get this last bit. It says to use a cup, so I'm just gonna get these last little bits. I'm gonna refocus on the center of this bread right here. That is the one thing it says not to do, you guys. Just don't dump it all in one place. She, she cannot stress it enough. I'm telling you, like, I read her whole blog article and in like eight different spots, she brings up that you guys don't wanna dump this egg mixture. Just dump it and let it not soak into your bread slowly. Okay. <clears throat> I know it's painstaking to watch me, you guys, but it really will be worth it. I use the heel for hot dog buns. Just wait a few years, I'll be at the one running around your house and my undies saying I'm hungry. You already are, Dad. <laughs> you do do that when you're at my house. <laughs> my dad one time polished off an entire box of Girl Scout cookies reading a book. It was hilarious. He was sitting on the recliner and I was just watching him from the kitchen grab another one and another one. He was just so engrossed in his book. He wasn't paying attention to the fact that he was eating all of my caramel delights. Uh, okay, so now we have our first layer in here and then we are going to sprinkle. We are gonna take two tablespoons of brown sugar. One, a two. Two tablespoons of brown sugar, two teaspoons of cinnamon. I need to wipe this off. Okay. So, brown sugar, cinnamon, and I'm just kind of mashing that up with a spoon. Just get it nice and mixed in. And it says to use most of this on your center layer because if you use too much of it on your top layer, your, your French toast will look really, really brown <clears throat> when you bake it. And that's my fun. All right, so we are going to just sprinkle most of this in the center, it says. So two tablespoons 
of brown sugar, two teaspoons of cinnamon sprinkled in the center of our French toast. Cinnamon is strong, I can smell it through my nose. Okay, here we go. Well, to tell the truth, they don't put many cookies in a bag. <laughs> right, Lynn, just not enough of cookies, that's for sure. I, I don't, I won't, <laughs> I won't argue with that. There are never enough cookies in anything. All right, <clears throat> now we are going to need to repeat our process all over again. There we go. Get that shoved in there. Now, we're gonna take this and we're gonna start all over again. It just says, make sure all the slices are well saturated and then end with sprinkling the remaining cinnamon sugar on the top. So I'm gonna really focus this mixture right here on these end pieces, you guys. Just really focus on your crust. Your center doesn't need a lot of love. It's these crust pieces that we don't want to neglect. My kids are getting spoiled. They're getting to stay up late because mommy's distracted and not cracking the whip on them getting out of the tub. They're gonna be wrinkly little babies. My kids would stay all day in the tub if it would stay warm. Jody, I completely agree. When it comes to baking dishes like this, this pan is awesome. I want to say my mother-in-law got it for my husband before he even met me because he's had it since before we started dating. And I was kind of hesitant of it at first because of the way it looked because I'm sure he is cooked incorrectly in it. <laughs> um, but I have fallen in love with it since and I use it anytime I'm making anything like this. Um, it goes this, then it goes glass, then it goes metal when it comes to baking stuff. It already smells really good too, Marissa. This uh, cinnamon made it really kind of pop. All right, so I'm just focusing on these edge pieces, you guys. Just nice crust. We want that. You want to do it slow. So if nothing else, if you don't want to take the time to brush it, just don't dump it all at once. Just pour a little bit and let it soak in. Move on to the other piece. Pour a little bit and let it soak in. Move to another piece. You just don't want to just dump it and hope that your bread can keep up because it won't keep up. Your bread cannot absorb the liquid as fast as that. So it will all just drop to the bottom. And then you will have a yucky, soggy mess in the bottom. So I'm actually gonna stop there, you guys. I'm probably gonna leave half a cup of the mixture in here <clears throat> because I really don't want this to get over soggy. I will let you know in the morning if I shorted us and if our toast was too dry, but I don't think it will be. I think if I seal this airtight and put it in the fridge, I don't think we'll have any problems with it not being saturated with the milk and egg mixture. So it says just sprinkle the remaining oops, of your cinnamon brown sugar topping on top, most of it in your middle layer, you guys. So focus most of this mixture in your min middle layer. You don't need much of it on top, it says. Here we go. And it's done, you guys. Bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> it's a pampered chef, I believe. It is a Pampered Chef. Yep, Pampered Chef Stone Pan. All right, you guys, let's look. Yep, sprinkle the cinnamon sugar, cover tightly and chill in the fridge overnight. Then you'll preheat 350. Make sure that you put it on the lower middle rack. Lower middle position. So lower rack, middle position. 350 for 40 to 45 minutes, covered for the third, first 30 minutes and only over, uncover it after that. Be sure to scrape up the sticky, ooey goodness on the bottom when you serve it. It definitely says that, you guys. Um, serve with optional toppings if desired. Optional toppings being powdered sugar, maple syrup, or fresh berries. Um, the person that wrote this recipe, you guys, 
said that it doesn't need topping. It doesn't even need syrup. That's how good it is. Um, I will probably just put butter on mine and that's about it. My husband is so cute. I had this tin foil for a recipe from the other night and I didn't use it. And so he folded it up and put it back in the, in the drawer so that I would use it. All right. So cover as tightly as possible, you guys. Get those edges nice and rounded out so that there's no air getting into it. And then we just put it in the fridge overnight. How awesome is that? And then breakfast will be ready to go. All you have to do is preheat your oven. <clears throat> Okay, found a place for it in the old refrigerator. Yep, stone pampered chef pan, you guys. I had a kitty cat in my sink. <laughs> She's like, put me down, Mom. I don't want to see all the people. She was in my sink trying to get the egg that was in there. All right, <clears throat> you guys know what time it is. Giveaway time. This is how I roll my bread up, if anybody wants to know. All right, let's get this egg and milk and stuff wiped up so I don't get it on my computer. And I put it on the top of my brown sugar Tupperware. Just making messes all the time, you guys. It never ends. Hope you guys like my fuzzy pants. Thanks, Crystal. My fuzzy capri pants. <laughs> I just saw your comment. That's so funny. Is the light in my fridge blue? Let's take a look. Um, yeah, kind of. It's kind of a, like that true white color, like that bluish white. We have my little tabby cat. She is cute. I have two cats. That's uh, that's Sandy, and the other one is Brazil, and they're sisters. I um, I uh, rescued them together. My little babes. <coughs> yeah, Crystal, that's awesome. We're in our uh, our fuzzy capri pants. <laughs> we rock. Oh God. Love it, love it, love it. <laughs> and, all right. Oops. My son is singing a song about me. Mom, 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 mom. All right, Crystal, Jaden, Tabitha, Lynn, Heather, Tracy. Um, they are Toy Australian Shepherds, Zena. Toy Australian Shepherds. They are my other babes. We have two dogs and two cats too. Just can't go wrong with two and two and two. I've got two kids, two dogs, two cats, one husband. <laughs> uh, thank you. They actually, those are the names that they were given um, in their foster home. So I just kind of kept them that way. I feel like it fit them pretty well. So, <clears throat> but thank you. They are really cute. Teresa. Lacey, Teresa's mom's on here, or am I mom? <laughs> Marissa D, I've got you, Teresa H, Lacey W, Marissa, did I say D? Ter Teresa H. <clears throat> my brain still isn't working the best, you guys, but I'm doing my best. Lynn L, I've got you. Becky G, um, if you guys are getting filtered, just throw an emoji in, that usually helps. I'm here in the background, Star, hello, in the background. Nina, I've got you. Heather, I've got you. Kim S, hello. Cindy Whelans, remember you guys, if you have won this month, you cannot enter your name in to win. Please keep me honest, you guys, because I cannot remember who has won this month and who hasn't. Linda C, Nina, you have two cats too. It's awesome, you guys. I never, ever used to be a cat person. I always thought kittens were cute, but I didn't really like cats. And now I'm like in love with my cats. <laughs> it's so funny. I love my dogs too, but my cats have actually like kind of snuck up past my dogs because my cats love me more than my dogs. My dogs, um, ever since I popped out some kids, my dogs don't really like me. They like my husband. So 
I traded them in since they traded me in. <laughs> Definitely going to have to try this recipe. Watching our grand pups for two weeks. Oh, little ball puppy is so cute. Mom, this is the cooking show. Is she confused? Teresa, she confused at what she's watching. Jeff L, Lacey, or Tracy. I have one cat and four big dogs. My husband wants big dogs. And I told him until he starts taking care of them full time, he can't pick what he gets because I don't like big dogs. Because then they live big poops and I don't like that. Kathy, we adopted our two kitties as well. You guys, adoption when it comes to cats is the way to go. I can't say that I've ever adopted a dog. Um, I've looked into it, but I feel like every dog I've ever wanted says won't do good with other dogs or kids. So I've had to just kind of deal with it, <clears throat> sadly. Valerie, Amy J, Valerie R, Jody H, Kitty, I've got you girl, Sarah H. I feel like we already have a Sarah H, so is it the same Sarah? Sarah, do we have two Sarah H's? I'm worried now. Sarah. Sarah Hemingway, okay, I've got you. Sarah, I've got you. Kim B, I have you. Oops, no, that's Kim S. Kim B, Amy J, I've got you. Kim H, I've got you. Star White, Laura C, Kim S. You guys, we got lots of Kims on here. Hi, everybody. Kims must like me. <laughs> My, my mother-in-law's name is Kim. That's why I say that and laugh. <laughs> um, Jasmine P. I've got you, Jasmine. Thelma. Thelma P. Melissa. Melissa A. Tammy C. We have one dog, she's a two-year-old Shih Tzu. I grew up with Shih Tzus, I love Shih Tzus, you guys. No, kitty, not yet. I got my voice back, so that's good. I could not talk yesterday at all. Um, and my doctor gave me something to get my voice back, so that's good. Betty, yep, I've got you, Betty K. But I'm still kind of nursing this cold. I'm not a big dog person either. I have a little Pomeranian Chihuahua. My mom had a Pom Pomeranian when I was a kid. Sasha was her name, and she was she was not a nice dog. She loved my mom. Loved my mom. But if you got anywhere close to my mom, it was... Rah, 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 rah. And I have no idea why. So, it was not the most fun. But then we got a Shih Tzu. Mallory, I've got you. Mallory, F. Um, Crystal says hi. Um, but then we got a Shih Tzu. And his name was Nico. And he was awesome. He just passed away last year. But he was super cute and sweet. And then he got grumpy and old. Um, Bill, I've got you, <clears throat> Arlene from Illinois, got you, Rose Crow, Eileen S. Nope, it's not Thursday, you guys. It is Saturday night, and we are prepping breakfast for Sunday. We did, <clears throat> I know, Eileen, my weekends are kind of like, uh, whatever I feel like throwing at you guys is when I come on. So I decided we were going to kind of change it up a bit, and I try to do desserts on the weekend. So um, I kind of stayed with that same pattern of something sweet, but I did it for breakfast. So we're going to do this. We did this French toast bake, you guys. It's going to be so good. You have a puggle, Sammy, how cute. I love animals, you guys. We also have a toad and a frog. Yes, Mallory, I've got you. Sammy, I've got you as well. Eileen, you, Katie Curry. All right, I'll read through the list and then we will see. If I still don't read your name, comment it again and then we will get this giveaway going. Crystal M, Jaden S, Tabitha L, Lynn L, Heather F, Tracy K, Nina B, Kim B, Kathy K, Marissa D, Teresa H, Lacey W, Sarah H, Becky G, Star W, Kim S, Cindy W, Linda C, Rebecca L, Denise B, Courtney R, Becky K, Jasmine P, Dean R, Jeff L, Kim H, Amy J, Valerie R, Jody H, Kim B, Kim H, Laura C, Kim S, Thelma P, Melissa A, Tammy C, Betty K, Mallory F, Bill W, Arlene M, Rose C, Eileen S, and Sammy B. Eileen, do I have you twice? 
<clears throat> Kylie. No, I do not. Do I? No. Mm, I got it. Um, uh, Mallory, I've got you. Okay, no problem. I just got for you. I'm my daughter from the movies and hopped on. It looks yummy. Thank you. You're welcome. Three chihuahuas. See, look at all of these. Animal lovers on here. Terry M. Just tuned in. What did I miss? Sandy, you missed the show, girl. We made a French toast bake that's going to sit in our fridge in an airtight um with air uh, tin foil over the top airtight and it's gonna sit overnight and then in the morning my husband's gonna wake up he's gonna turn the oven on and he's gonna bake it for 30 minutes covered and 15 minutes uncovered and then it's gonna be this yummy brown sugar cinnamon french toast and it's gonna be so good eileen yeah i think i only said it once and i don't know why i felt like i had said it before that I didn't. It's only on there once. All right. Let's see if I missed anybody else. And then Eileen, if you can hear me all the way over here. Eileen, do you want to pick a number between 1 and 10? Valerie, it's going to be so good. Yes, Eileen. So if you, oh, that's probably why Eileen and Eileen. Um, if you want to make this and you don't want to be, um, make it the night before, as long as you give it like 35 to 45 minutes to sit before you bake it, it should be good to go. Okay. So you do have to wait. You do have to wait a little bit. It does recommend that you do let it sit as long as you can, but the shortest amount of time being 35 to 45 minutes. You're welcome. <laughs> You are welcome. I always try to pick the like person that comments most recently so that I know that they're still listening. Kim S and Kim H twice. There's so many Kims. Okay. So Kim B, Kim S, Kim H, Kim B, Kim H, Kim S. I repeated a bunch of people. No wonder I was saying Kim so much. Do we have different Kims though? I hope I'm not getting rid of somebody. So Kim B, Kim S. So we can get rid of this Kim B. Kim S. I was really just hiking up the odds, you guys. All right. Thank you for paying attention. Kim B. Kim S. Kim H. Kim H. I just repeated both of them. No wonder, no wonder we had so many Kims. Arietta, I've got you. Arietta. I'm assuming I'm saying your name right. You don't ever correct me, so I hope I'm not butchering it. Eileen, if you picked a number, it filtered you out. So maybe spell the number out. <clears throat> I don't know why it does that. <sighs> you and your mom are both here. Teresa H. I've got you, Teresa, but what's your mom's name? I saw you talking to her. Is there two Teresa H's? Is your mom's name Teresa too? That's why I use my initial. Okay. Good to know. Okay, so we've got two Teresa H's. No wonder. Teresa L H and Teresa H. She picked seven. Thank you, Azucena. Um, I don't know how to say that name. I tried. Azucena. Azucena King. My son's first name is Kingston. Arietta, you're welcome. Hi, Amber. Are you using your mixing bowls, girl? All right, let's lock this in. Names are locked in. If I pull your name, I do remove it from the mix so that everyone has a chance to have their name pulled. You have a beagle and have been looking for a puppy beagle, but they are hard to find and expensive. My, um, my aunt actually has a, a beagle named Holly, and she got her in 2008, I think she said. She's old now, but... All right, number seven. I got a little bit of water on my screen. Number seven. Here we go. Number one, Kim B. And the other 18 Kims I put in here. Number two, Crystal. Number three, Tammy C. Number four, Tracy number five 
Azucena. Number six, Bill W. And number seven, Drumroll, Sarah H. Sarah Hemingway, I think is her last name. Sarah, are you still on? Hello, Sarah. Um, your job is to send me your shipping information and I will get something sent off to you. Sarah, if you are still here and you are listening, you have won and you can send me your shipping information and I will get something sent off to you. Sarah Hemingway, yep, that was her last name. She hasn't commented in a while, so maybe she's just sitting back and, re sitting back and relaxing. Sarah, congratulations, you won. Just send me your shipping information. I'll get something sent off to you. Congratulations. Um, <clears throat> and we will be back here Monday. And I think because of the way I'm feeling, I am going to be lazy on Monday. And we are going to do the crock pot version of the Panera broccoli cheddar soup. But I have included the stovetop way, the crock pot way, and the... the um, I was going to say pressure cooker, but what are they called? <laughs> Why can I not think of it? Okay, so <clears throat> stove top version, crock pot version, and... Oh my god, you guys. <laughs> well, there are three ways to cook this soup, and I'm going to use the crock pot way, but I have included the other recipes so that you can use whatever way works for you. I love Panera's broccoli cheddar soup because they've got... Um, carrots in there as well and it's really yummy and delicious so i'm super excited thank you arlene instapot <laughs> you guys i'm so bad okay thank you instapot slow cooker stove top i'm gonna use the crock pot way because i'm lazy which means that you guys will see me earlier on monday than you normally do because i will put it in in the afternoon so that it can cook for the right amount of time <laughs> you guys <laughs> You guys, I don't brain fart often, but that was a bad one. Um, thank you guys for hanging out with me. I will see you guys on Monday. Don't forget to get your... Yeah, I mean, I do. I do have a cold. Uh, oh, we'll just blame it on that. Um, <clears throat> um, don't forget to get your votes in, please, for Thursday night's dinner. They are two pretty healthy versions of what we want to make. Um, one of them is an Alfredo sauce. So we're going to make chicken, Alfredo, pasta. Um, the Alfredo sauce is made out of cauliflower and I'm kind of excited about it. Um, and the other one is an orange chicken, um, that's supposed to be super healthy as well. I, for whatever reason, feel like it's not chicken. I feel like it might be cauliflower, but I don't remember, but they're both super healthy, paleo, gluten, whatever the heck they say on each of their things, but to get your votes in and then we will cook what we can on Thursday. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. I will post a picture tomorrow morning as my family dives in. We have some um, raspberries and stuff to put on our French toast in the morning. Um, and then I'll see you guys on Monday. Thanks for hanging out with me. Bye.